News for Tucson, live at 5. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. I'm John Overall. And I'm Angelique Lazardi. A big day in Tucson as Governor Doug Ducey held his sixth State of the State address. School districts around southern Arizona have released their plans for reopening this fall. Some districts offering alternatives to in-person classes. News 4 Tucson's Austin Walker is live with a look at what TUSD is doing. Austin. Begin tonight with Decision 2020. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Angelique Lazardi. Voters across Arizona cast their vote today for a number of races. We have team coverage tonight. News 4 Tucson's Priscilla Casper, Mark Mingura, Eric Fink, and Danelle Comfer are live across Tucson with results and everything that you need to know about this primary election. One Oklahoma family is breathing a sigh of relief after a strange man walked into their home. But lucky for them, a four legged member of the family was on watch. Tracy McCoy has never been more thankful for her dog Dubai. The 122 pound Great Dane saved the day when a strange man walked right into their home in broad daylight. Yes, News 4 Tucson's Stephanie Weaver and Danelle Confair are live at two locations where fire departments responded to swift water rescues. Let's begin with Danelle Confair. Good evening, I'm Angelique Lazardi. John Overall has the evening off. The Department of Homeland Security and Victim Advocate Organizations say COVID-19 has led to a rise in sex trafficking. We begin tonight with breaking news. The United Steelworkers Union has ended its nine-month strike against ASARCO. The local 937 posted a statement this afternoon on social media saying it will end the current strike and make an unconditional offer to return to work. A convicted sex offender was apprehended after he allegedly entered the United States illegally. U.S. Customs and Border Protection say Juan Carlos Hernandez Garcia was arrested early Monday morning near Rio Rico. News 4 Tucson's Eric Fink is live at Harkins Theater on the south side with the story of one really, really dedicated fan. There are some dedicated fans out here, Angelique. This election day is a bit different as we face a pandemic with candidates working to get voters to polls and some holding their campaign parties virtually. Just have to remain positive, like I've been telling you throughout this entire Wash your car. That's always a good way to yes, do it. Yes, and that too. You always tell me to say that, so maybe <laughs> I'll go wash my car for you, okay? Do it for all of us, yeah. <laughs> all right, sounds good. We'll be right back after the break, but first let's head outside one more time via our News 4 Tucson Skynet camera. You're looking live from Speedway and Country Club. We'll be right back. We are live here at Catalina State Park, where as of right now, I can tell you, we are covering this Bighorn Fire. We have a team coverage right now, and I want to show you something really quick. You can see the plumes of smoke are billowing up on that mountain right over there. This has probably changed in about an hour or so. It was a big drop in containment here for the Bighorn Fire, making it very challenging for these fire crews. We are now just a little over 37,000 acres, and before it was 40% contained, now it's 21% contained at this time. She's at her poolside, and Angelique would really like to see you jump in the pool this time around. Maybe next time we're closing this one out, but I know you guys are dying to see me do that. This was a very successful day. We received so many donations from the community. Corona to Tucson Fire Station, fire crew, they rock. So far it's been successful. We're getting those kids in the water, all for a good cause to teach them those ABCs of water safety. Something to eat and you don't even have enough to wash clothes with. You know, it's, I've been there before too. For the last couple of months now, this former U.S. Marine who prefers to remain anonymous has been calling this 10 by 10 storage unit his home. But now he's being forced out on Veterans Day. I kind of like uh, put it together in my head to, to, you know, put everything in there and hopefully not be bothered about it. Stay quiet and at least it's in out of the weather. With a power chair that no longer works and a disability check that only stretches so far. It's been a challenge for this veteran to power through his daily life, but still manages to keep the faith. He needs help, and I'm going to do what I can do to, to help him in this situation. But just like that, this man, Charles Spath, heard this veteran's story and is now coming to the rescue. With millions of members, it's the leading sugar daddy website called SeekingArrangement.com where young female college students are now cashing in more than ever. Jumpstarting your future begins with choosing the right education. 
seeking arrangement provided a list of the top 20 universities with the most sugar babies. The U of A ranks at number 14. Women are becoming wise to this lifestyle. They're understanding that they can seek exactly what they want out of their relationships. And if that's a man to support them and spoil them and maybe pay for tuition, then they're not afraid to ask for it on seeking arrangement. Meet Victoria, a senior at the U of A who says she joined the website to improve her quality of life. I'm a student. I have no parents and no support. I'm taking care of my older grandparents now, and that's how I became a sugar baby. See, there's a whole bunch here. Victoria says it didn't take long for sugar daddies of all ages to come to her rescue. You're 28 years old. Yes. How old are your sugar daddies? 57, 62, and 81. From lavish trips to countless gifts, Victoria says her sugar daddies who live in Tucson provide her with the love and support she desires. They paid my bills. They buy me a lot of presents, like clothes and shoes and everything. They pay my tuition fees. They help pay my rent. Victoria also admits she's intimate with two of her sugar daddies. Are you sleeping with them to get the gifts, the trips, no. the money? I'm sleeping with them because they look awesome. They look hot and they turn me on. The number of babies exposed to opioids continues to climb at an alarming rate here in Southern Arizona. Tonight, one mother is sharing her story of addiction with News 4 Tucson in hopes of saving lives. It's new at six. We choose a drug before, you know, a baby living inside of us. For most of her pregnancy, Brittany Hansen was using heroin. I've been the worst of the worst shooting up at the end of the trap house, doing everything I needed to do just to get my high. But that high quickly reached an ultimate low. That's when Brittany knew she needed help to save baby Graceland, who's now two months old. For the longest time I hated myself because of, I'm like, look at what I'm doing. How can I do this? We are not going to judge them. We're not going to turn them away. News 4 Tucson spoke with TMC's neonatal abstinence syndrome annex, where babies receive specialized care for mothers who use certain drugs during pregnancy. A TMC spokesperson tells News 4 Tucson the number of newborns born at TMC who've been exposed to opioids has more than doubled since 2017. So any mother that is pregnant and either injects or swallows or sniffs during pregnancy, it is going to the baby. From having the shakes to being sensitive to light, baby Graceland did experience some symptoms after her mother was treated with a prescribed opioid known as methadone. 